66 books, y'all. That's right. It's a beautiful day. Amen. To worship God every day, every minute of the day. Are we ready to worship him, church? Welcome. John 12, 32 says, when we lift him here on the earth, he will draw people to him. And that's what we want, right? Let's worship God. Stand to your feet in spirit, in heart, in mind, in soul, with our everything. Let's give him praise. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Magnify Jesus. Magnify the Lord. on this earth, Father, but we want to point everything to you to give you praise. You are the blesser, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, We can, and we want to commit our service to you, Lord. We commit ourselves to you, Lord, to open ourselves, Lord, for your instruction, Father God, so we can know what to do from this point forward, wherever we may be at. Forget about yesterday, Lord. We are so grateful, Lord Jesus. We give you all the glory and honor, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can we give God another hand of praise? Amen. Let's continue to worship the Lord. Hosea.
friends know when we see you pass out. Your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away.
for your glory, that we would worship you, Lord. Father, this morning, go before us, fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Open our ears, our eyes, our hearts, Lord, to be receptive to the things of you, Lord. And Father, we thank you, we praise you. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray that we all say, amen, amen. You may be seated. God is good, amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Welcome everyone here in the house and online as well. We're going to continue in a time of worship as we receive our tithes and offerings. I'd like to ask the ushers to come forward. And after that, Brother Lamar will pray for our offerings this morning. I sing praises to your name.
glory to his name this morning. Let's sing it out. I give glory to your name. tithes and offerings. And Lord, we just ask that you continue to look over this church, this house, Lord, each and every person here in the congregation and online, Lord, bless each and every giver that uh, contributed whatever they were able to, Lord, and, and gives faithfully, Lord, and also we want to uh, extend our blessing to each and any and every place that these resources are distributed to, Lord. May it bring blessings into the lives of the people that it reaches, Lord. And we just ask that you continue to look over the church and the pastor as he brings forth the word of God, Lord. And we just thank you for all that you've done for this house, Lord. Continue to look over it. Continue to bless it. And may it continue to be a blessing to all, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Lamar. Thank you, worship team. God is good. Amen. Amen. This moment, the uh, Faith Vision kids can be dismissed to their classes, to their class. And if you have your Bible with you, I turn to our scripture reading for this morning. We're going to continue in the book of Psalms, chapter 119, Psalms 119. We're going to be looking at verses 25 to 32. Once you get there this morning, please stand with me as we read together the Word of God. Psalms 119, verses 25 to 32. As you're turning there this morning, just a few announcements. Next week is our Father's Day Sunday service, amen? And uh, I'd like to invite all the fathers to come out, wherever you may be, whoever you may be, feel free to come and uh, fellowship with us this uh, next Sunday morning as, uh, once again, another blessed time in the Lord to encourage one another, especially encouraging our fathers, amen. We had a blessed a study last Wednesday uh, as well as we were going through the book of Proverbs, Brother John uh, teaching us and leading us in that. What a blessed time that was. So I, I wanna encourage all the men when, when you get a chance and whenever we have studies, hop on. It's our Zoom uh, Bible study. And what a blessed time it is to be encouraged in that. If you have the uh, scripture reading for this morning, Psalms 119, Verse 25 to 32, let's turn there this morning and let's read together. The word of the Lord says this, My soul clings to the dust. Revive me according to your word. I have declared my ways and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts. So shall I meditate on your wonderful works. My soul melts from heaviness. Strengthen me according to your word. Remove from me the way of lying, and grant me your law graciously. I have chosen the way of truth. Your judgments I have laid before me. I cling to your testimonies, O Lord. Do not put me to shame. I will run the course of your commandments, for you shall enlarge my heart. Amen. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful morning once again. Thank you for reminding us in Psalms 119, Lord God, that you will enlarge our heart, not to boast about anything that we can do, Father, but to be willing to be obedient to your word, your word that will save us, your word that will melt away heaviness, lying from us, Lord God, sin and your judgment, Father. Father God, that you would bestow grace and mercy upon us, Lord God, as we have this heart, a heart of God a godly heart that is willing to obey you, to yield to you, Lord God. And that is the heart that we are longing for and seeking this morning, that you would change our fleshly, stony heart to be a, a, a heart, Lord God, that is sensitive and submissive to you, Lord God. Father, we praise you, Lord, as we remember our, our day of prayer for America, Lord God, to pray for increasing courage and peace that is rooted in Jesus. Father, we pray that for all of our, uh, the people in our country, Lord, and not ending there, but for all people around the world, Lord. Father, go before our message this morning, our time of fellowship. May we fellowship with you. We give you all the glory and honor in your son Jesus' name, and we all say, amen, amen. You may be seated. Praise God. God is good. Amen. What a great, what a great psalm to start with. Lord, <clears throat> uh, take inventory of our hearts. Remove anything that is wicked, anything that is shameful, Lord God. Make me to be more like you. And as I, you know, as we finish off that last verse, I love what that verse says. Lord, enlarge my heart. <laughs> enlarge my heart to be more bold, to be more strong, and not in the things of this world. Amen. You, you, we men... Uh, get together and we want to enlarge our heart and boast about the things that we we want we can do right <laughs> and uh, but not so when we come to the Lord we boast in Christ Jesus and enlarge our hearts to be willing to the things of God we're going to continue in our study of the book of Joel book of Joel Old, Old Testament minor prophet one of the 12 minor prophets the name Joel means the Lord is God. Jehovah is God. He rules. Amen. And uh, we're going to be looking at verses 13 to 20. We're going to close out chapter 1. But as you're returning to Joel chapter 1, looking at verses 13 to 20, just a recap of our message a couple of weeks ago. And the title of that message was Complacency, Carelessness, and Insincere Worship was the downfall of Joel chapter 1 and the people in Judah and Jerusalem in that time, based around 800 B.C., the book of Joel was written. And the first verse tells us that it's God's word that was given to Joel. And I love that because it's not our word, it's not anything that we uh, should rely on, but God's word, his power, his authority, his purpose given to us. And it's his word that we stand on and we preach so that all will hear his good news and come to know him as Lord and Savior. Then he tells us later on in the verses, to, he instructs us to tell our children and the generations to come of the trouble that is nearing, perhaps even already in the land, the four waves of locusts that came and destroyed the land. One, the chewing locust. Two, the swarming locust. Third, the crawling locust. Lastly, the consuming locust. It was like four waves of destruction coming. And if we liken that to our lives today, it's like the, the many difficulties and trials that we go through in life. It just never ends, right? When it rains, it just pours, and it seems like it never stops. It's like a locust that comes, but he devours everything. But then there's a, a three other waves of locusts that come, and they chew, and they consume until there's nothing left in the land. And I know that we feel like that at times. Lord, have you ever prayed? Have you ever said those things out of your mouth? Lord, when is this going to ever end? When, when is this, you know, this, this difficulty ever going to end for me, right? And... Uh, I love one of the pastors that uh, we, we uh, uh, sat under for many years. He says, well, if you're going through a season of learning, hurry up and learn it so you can move on to the next thing. Right? 
And so that's the, uh, the, the mentality that I've kind of taken over in the past years. Lord, if you're teaching me, I want to learn it right now because I don't want to revisit this again. But yet we see here a time where all of a sudden destruction comes to the land, to the people, to the livestock, and it does not end. We also see that in chapter 1, verses 1 to 12, that their sin was not idol worship as it was a normal and custom in foreign countries. It wasn't pagan worship. It was the sin of complacency, carelessness. And in fact, Scripture tells us that it was drunkenness. The sin of drunkenness. The sin of, 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 of taking in all of their passions of this, the, the worldly flesh and uh, lusts that they've simply uh, forgot about the things of God in his house to take care of. And when the destruction came, they've allowed it to, to take over the land and even themselves. Lastly, in verse 12, everything withers away. And it even tells us not only the land and the livestock, cattle and the flocks, but their joy is withered away. Their confidence and hope, in other words, you and I are alive today and we can make the change of the course that we are taking from destruction and disappointment to promise an everlasting life in Jesus. We can change the course, amen? It didn't end right, and it didn't end well in verse 12. The land was destroyed. Their joy was destroyed. People passed away. Cattle and livestock passed away. And even their hope passed away. But the hope and, and, and the promise that was uh, placed for us a couple of weeks ago in our study, in our last study, was this, we can make the change. We can decide and we can choose life in Jesus Christ. Amen? And I pray that as we continue to look into these verses of verses 13 and 20 today, that we have this attitude and mindset that today is a day that I will make a change, make a stand to follow Jesus Christ. Amen? It's not an accident that you're here today listening. It's not an accident that you're online. You're here because God wants to deliver a message of hope and promise to you. This morning, as we look into the verses 13, I want to talk to you and encourage you this morning of a longing for Jesus, a longing for Jesus, a desire for Jesus, a wanting for Jesus. I know that there's been many times in our lives that we've been wanting something, right? We, we say to ourselves, Lord, if you could just bless me with this one thing, I promise I won't ask you for another thing. I long for this thing, Lord, and this is the one thing that's incomplete in my life. And if you would just do this, Lord, I promise, I promise, I promise. I, I know that I've said those prayers many, many times growing up. Lord, if you would just do this. I remember when I was in high school, I was like telling the Lord, Lord, if, I, if you just allow me to graduate, I promise I'll never ask you for anything. How many know that graduation came uh, you, you, you graduated, got your diploma, and there's like many other things that you long for and desired for afterwards too, right? Uh, you desired to grow up. You desired to get this job. You desired many things. But as we look into scripture this morning, may you be encouraged that the one thing that we long and desire for is always going to be Jesus Christ, who will give you the true fulfillment in your heart. Let's look at verse 13. And it says this, gird yourselves and lament, you priests, wail, you who minister before the altar, come lie all night in sackcloth, you who minister to my God for the grain offering and the drink offering are withheld from the house of your God. So remembering verses 1 to 12, the drunkenness of the ministers in the household of God Joel is calling them back. Remember your first love, guys? You need to come back. You need to get ready, gird yourselves, and lament. Priests, <laughs> hello, priests, ministers, come back to your first love with Christ. Look at the nation gone astray. Have you forgotten the call of God in your life? Come back, get ready. Put on clothes of sackcloth and minister before the altar. And he says, all night, 
all night. I remember growing up, we would have the, the prayer chains, right? And we would pray here all night. It seemed like as, as, as a kid growing up, it seemed like it was all night even though it was like just the early mornings of a Saturday, uh, Sunday morning from midnight to six in the morning. But it felt like all night for me. Today, we can't even withstand prayer for 10 minutes. We, we can't even read our Bibles for, for five minutes and then falling asleep. But yet, we could be on Facebook for hours. We could be on YouTube for, for, for five plus hours. We could, we could be doing all the recreational things of this world for hours. But when it comes uh, to the things of God and God calling us back to the first love, we can't even spend minutes crying out to Jesus. Yet Joel is saying, you need to come back. Ministers of the house, put on sackcloth. In other words, you should be lamenting crying, wailing out, mourning for what is happening to your people, your livestock, your land, and get dressed for an appropriate time, which is, in other words, get dressed for a funeral, sackcloth, and mourn. And he says, for the grain offering and the drink offering are withheld from the house of God. All the offerings that we used to give to God, we can no longer give because everything has withered away. The locusts and the destruction that has happened has taken away the very things, the very fruits that produce the drink offering. The very wheats and the plants that produce the grain offering. Everything is gone, even our joy. A couple of months ago, God showed me a, 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 a close picture of what lamenting and mourning uh, was. And it was through my daughter, Sarai. Uh, for, for many weeks, she had been holding on to um, a secret, she said. And, um, and it just bugged her, bugged her all week. And then she would complain, oh, my tummy's hurting. I'm going to go to sleep. My dad, my tummy's hurting. So we, we've been trying to diagnose this issue, Ju Jubilee and I. Dad, maybe she's lactose intolerant. She maybe, you know, all of a sudden she can't, you know, take take dairy things. But then weeks passed by, and all of a sudden she came to us. She started weeping, and it was like one of those crimes where it was like, you know, trying to hold your breath. Have you ever cried like that? Like, <laughs> it's like one of those crying. And I was like, what's wrong? What's 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 going on? What happened? Like, you know, what could possibly happen so bad that you're crying like that? Come to find out, as she spoke and opened her mouth, she said, Dad, I've been holding a secret from you and Mom. She began to tell us what she was, you know, what, what happened. And I was like, that, no, no problem. We'll talk about that. But thank you for your honesty. And immediately the Lord spoke to me. That's how you should be when you sin and fall short. You should be mourning and lamenting for your sin. Are you even like that? Are you even so remorseful like that that you would come to me and, and, and cry out to me, lament for the wrongs that you've done? That is what Joel is calling the ministers to do. And I want to say to our church today, that is what God is calling us to do today as, we, as the Holy Spirit fills us and convicts us, are we remorseful? Are we willing to change and repent from our wicked ways? Hallelujah. Yes, Father. And change because our life is on the line. You see, James chapter 4, verse 7 to 9 tells us this. Therefore, submit to God. Hallelujah. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. When we lament, this is what we're doing. When we take time to, to call out to God, when we take time to come back to the altars to give him his offering that is due him, because we've just sung, he is worthy of it all. Amen? The devil will flee from us if we submit to God. Verse 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Priests and ministers of the house, moms and dads, fathers and, and, and parents, leaders, lament. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you, James says. And he says, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. 
And he says, lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, your joy to gloom. And he's not saying, oh, you can't have fun no more. You need to live a life that is boring. But he's saying, no, take serious of what is going on. It's no joke. Family, it is no joke what is going on in our lives today. Don't take your life with, with a non-value, unimportance. Your life is worth uh, value and importance to God. It means something. We need you to live a life that is godly, to live a life that is purposeful and effective for Christ Jesus. Amen. Don't be too comfortable. Don't let our prayers become microwave prayers and microwave pr Christianity. Preheated miracles that we keep visiting back and looking back to, to miracles that God did in the past. No, look forward to what God will do and will do, uh, is going to do and will do through us. God wants to do something fresh in our lives. And it's a le lesson that we can learn today. As we look in these verses, next. What a verse to start off with, reminding us that we need to come back to God, amen? And offer him the offerings, the glory that he is due. Verse 14, let's read together. He says, consecrate a fast, call a sacred assembly, Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. Amen. He says, consecrate, call, and gather. Make a specific time set apart for the purpose of calling on for God, calling on God for help. And this was healing of the land, but most importantly, God's help to heal the hearts of people. Reminded of the story in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 30. If you're, uh, let's turn our Bibles to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. We're going to read from verses 15 to 17, but it talks about King Jehoshaphat and how they called and consecrated a, a time of gathering and prayer and calling out. This is what Joel is reminding us today. When we get into a rut and a situation in our lives, we don't just look into our own uh, fleshly power and our own wisdom, but we look unto God for his miraculous help. Second Chronicles 20, verse 15 to 17, it says, And he said, Listen, all of you, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, Do not be afraid nor dismayed. Because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but it's God's. Amen? Praise God for that. The, the, the situation that they're seeing here in Joel is not a situation that they should be worried about. Yes, they should give it unto God. Yes, it's in front of them. The, the destruction and, and everything decimated is, is, is prevalent and present in front of them. But God will make a way. And he says, tomorrow go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You will not need to fight in this battle, praise God. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. So right about now, they're about to get into a battle with the Ammonites and Moabites and the people of Mount Seir. And they're calling out to God, we don't know what to do, right? Same thing in Joel. We don't know what to do. Our land is destroyed. What do we need to do? And he's telling us to consecrate a fast, call an assembly, gather the elders, and all of the inhabitants of the land Come into the house of the Lord your God and cry out. And this is what they're doing. Let's gather together. Let's look to the Lord for prayer. And he says, do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. Later on in these verses, as the Ammonites and Moabites come together, they're, they're looking to the people of Israel. They're about to attack them. 
But all of a sudden, as the Lord intervenes, they begin to look unto one another. The enemies, the enemy's armies begin to look unto one another, and they begin to fight each other to the point to, the Bible says that no one survives in the enemy forces. Later on in verse 27 of, of 2 Chronicles chapter 20, it says that they turned every man of Judah and Jerusalem with Jehoshaphat in front of them to go back to Jerusalem with joy, for the Lord had made them rejoice over their enemies. As we gather and consecrate a fast and call a sacred assembly, and we gather everyone living in the land into the house of God, and we look upon God, and we trust in God. What does he do? He delivers us from our enemies. He delivers us from difficulty, and he gives us the victory. And you know what all they did? God instructed them to do was this, praise and worship him. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I would rather praise and worship God rather than get into a physical fight. Amen. God, as I am faithful praising you in the assembly, in your house, Lord, will you give me the victory as we praise and worship you for deliverance over the things that we're praying for, the things that we're asking you, Lord, to give us a, a, a pathway through, Lord God, for healing for financial stability, to be debt-free, whatever the dreams are that we have that glorify God and align with his will. Lord, we ask that you would go before us, deliver us as we praise and worship you, Lord God. Cry out to God in the assembly, all the inhabitants. That means every single living thing, everyone, from young to old. Amen? Everything that has breath, Psalms 150 says, what do we do? Praise the Lord. Verse 15 of Joel, it says, Alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as destruction from the Almighty. And it, it was a day definitely that the Ammonites and the Moabites experienced. It was the day of the Lord coming in judgment upon them. But here in Joel, we see the day of the Lord coming upon the land because of their sin and wickedness. Let that be not so for us believers, that the day of the Lord will find us in wickedness and in our sin or in judgment. That the day of the Lord as he comes will not find us doing things that are not of his purpose. But as God returns in his day, that he would find us worshiping him and praising him and serving him faithfully. Prepare for that day. Amen, church? When we see the signs of the times, his return is near. But also for believers, guess what that is for us? It is a promise for us to know that our redemption draws nigh. Praise Jesus. Amen? Amen. For the non-believer, they tremble. But for the believer, we rejoice because we know that our Savior is coming soon. Amen? Jesus says this in Luke chapter 21, verse 28. Now, when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws nigh. Amen. Oh, many people are just looking down and they're like, oh, no, this is the end of me. This is the end of my end of my works here on earth. What else is there left for me? Who cares about that? We want eternal life. We want that mansion that Jesus was talking about. Amen. We're too busy building mansions here on earth and, and all of these things. But man, we, I want to see what Jesus has prepared for us in heaven. And it will never fade away. It will never pass away. It is eternal. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let me read that again. Now, when these things begin to happen, when troubles begin to happen, all the signs of the times around us begin to happen. Look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. What a promise for us to keep today. Let's continue to read in verses 16 and 17. Is not the food cut off before our eyes? Joy and gladness from the house of our God, isn't it? 
It's all gone. The seed shrivels under the clods. Storehouses are in shambles. Barns are broken down for the grain has withered. The food is cut off from the supply. But not only this joy and gladness from God's house, there's a food shortage in the land of Judah, the land of Jerusalem. Guess what, family? There's also a food shortage in our country today. There's a food shortage in everything. As there, as there is a domino effect in everything that is going on in our country today, we look at scripture and it's the very same thing that is happening to us today presently. There's a food shortage in baby formula. And for those of you that like hot sauce, uh, sri, sri racha, there's, a food, there's gonna be a food shortage in that because there's a domino effect in everything. They say that the, uh, the Western droughts are an effect of it and um, uh, uh, labor shortages, the COVID-19 uh, restrictions, everything has a part of all of these shortages. And even the joy and gladness from the house of God. He's asking this question. Uh, let there be a food shortage and a, and a shortage of everything. That's okay. But let there not be a, a, shortage of, a shortage of God's goodness, gladness, and joy in our hearts. Everything else can be short. But we pray, Lord God, that your joy and your gladness would not be short in our lives. Look at what he says. The seed shrivels under the clods, even as they're trying to plant Seeds to replant and, and make the, the, the products that makes hot sauce. They can't. Because the ground is difficult. The ground won't produce. The land is devastated. And this causes hopelessness to people. Frustration, anxiety, and a whole list of other things that we can write down and think of. And it says storehouses are in shambles. Barns are broken down for the grain has withered. All I know is that as these things are short, we look to the promise that Jesus gives us. And uh, I just thank the Lord that you know, as we fast every Wednesday, I, I, I'm just, you know, it's a, it's a funny thing almost to say, but I thank God that we've been fasting for the pa past few years because it has conditioned our hearts and our lives to not depend on food, right? Um, but to de depend on the promises and the word of God every single day and to look up. Psalms 121, where does our help come from? It comes from the Lord. Lift up your heads. So we can ponder on that for a minute. Everything is cut off. Nothing else works as we try to plant and manufacture. It's not producing. But we can place our trust in the Lord that he will always provide for his people. Amen. Verse 18. How the animals groan. The herds of cattle are restless because they have no pasture. Even the flocks of the sheep suffer punishment. Not only did the people of Judah suffer from the drought of the land, but so did the animals, the cattle, and the flocks. You see, our sinful actions affects all. The human life, land, crops, and animals because of their insincere worship, because of their carelessness, because of their complacency. May we walk away today remembering the sin that has been committed, the sin that has happened, that we would not fall into drunkenness, but let us be sober minded, be alert to the things of God, to the warnings of God, to the signs of the times that we're drawing near to his return. And let us prepare for the day of the Lord. How the animals groan. 
The herds of the cattle are restless because they have no pasture. Let us watch closely our life and our conduct. Lest anything like this happens to us. Our spiritual life, our families around us, our communities around us because of what we have done. Lastly, in verse 19 to 20, it says, O Lord, to you I cry out. For fire has devoured the open pastures, and a flame has burned all the trees of the field. The beasts of the field also cry out to you. The water brooks are dried up, and the fire has devoured the open pastures. See, the animals longing for God. They're groaning. You know, we, we can, uh, sometimes we have this joke in, in the tongue and language, you know, like, if the animals can speak back to you, what would they say, you know, because you're mistreating them or something like that. We, we think about uh, uh, Balaam and his donkey, right? <laughs> Why are you mistreating me? Why are you doing this? And if, the, uh, you know, if, if, if we can interpret the animals and their groaning and speaking back to God, them saying, Lord, help us. Yes. Ministers, why have you neglected the things of God? They're longing for God. Everything is longing for God, even the plants, vegetation, yes. the field, the lands, a longing for redemption, a longing for rescuing for salvation, for comfort, for peace and rest. Today, church, I want to ask you, what are you longing for today? As the animals are longing and groaning for God and the fields are crying up to God, what are we longing for to God today? What are we crying out to God for? Are we call, crying out to God for rescuing and rest? Are we calling out and crying out for salvation? Is there a restlessness in your heart and in your soul today, I want to encourage you to give it to God. Hallelujah. Submit to Jesus. Yes. Let him have his way. You know, we've spent so many things, spent all of our time, all of our resources in the things of this world that don't matter. When it comes to the things of God, we've neglected. We've neglected it. And just as a sin of the ministers and the priests, this is what they've done. As they fell into drunkenness, they've spent all of their efforts in the things of this world and forgotten about the things of God. And this was the result of them. And their worship to God in the house of God was nothing to offer back up to him. And thus, affecting animals, people, land, crop, and flocks. The message today, what are we longing for today? Are we longing for Jesus? I pray that we are. Are we longing for the void in our hearts to be filled and to be comforted. And if that's you today, you're here. And I praise God, the message of God is this, is to fill that void in your heart. As you are longing for God to do something in your life, guess what? God longs to fill that void in your heart as well. He wants to provide for you. He wants to protect you. Today, church, he wants to love and rescue you. Amen? Earlier this week, my wife was gone away from home for a couple of, uh, a day and a half almost, almost a couple of days. And as they realized in the uh, maybe almost 24 hours later that mom was gone, uh, we called her. And as the kids got on the phone, all of a sudden they came back running with, with tears in their eyes. Like, what are you guys crying for? What's going on? Mom's just been gone for, you know, it seemed like a few hours to me. You know, but for them it was a long time. And they said they missed mom. They were longing for their mother. They were longing for the, the, the touch and the care of their mom. 
today I know that we're longing for something. It's the longing that we are experiencing in this hot summer heat, right? There's a restlessness. You're tossing and turning. You're not, you're not comfortable because there's something that is, you know, that is getting at you that you want to be at rest with and at peace with. I want to tell you this, family, if Jesus is not in, in your heart and you, you don't have a relationship with him, that is the reason why you're tossing and turning, because you want to fulfill all the things of this world, but it is temporary. It is fading away, and it will never satisfy you, but only Jesus will satisfy you. Amen? And, I've, and you know, I've, I've heard uh, some of the brothers talk that they don't have AC in their home. It's like tossing and turning in, the ho- in a hot house. Right? Because it's so uncomfortable. And until the cool breeze comes and it blows on you, then you're, ah, what a relief. I can enjoy sleeping and resting now because there's a cool breeze that's cooling me down. And that's the same with us trying to find peace in this world. You know, we're trying to find it here, but it's, it's not working. We're trying to find it there, whether it's money, whether it's relationships whether it's in materialistic things. Let me dabble in this a little bit. Maybe it'll comfort me and give me peace. But you'll soon find out, maybe years later, hopefully not, I hope that you'll find out even right now that the Lord is speaking to you, that only he can comfort you and bring you rest as you long for Jesus Christ. Amen? Psalms 50 verse 15 says, Call upon me in the day of trouble. Call upon me in the day of your restlessness. Call upon me on the day of your being uncomfortable. And I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Amen. Call upon him today as the animals. If the animals can do it, so can we, church. God's wonderful creation in mankind. And may God keep us anchored in Christ Jesus. As we call on him, may he be the anchor of our soul, as Hebrews 6, verse 19 and 20 tells us. As we call on him, Lord, that you would sustain us in my life. Keep me steady. Keep me steadfast so that I would not fade away, that I would not wither away. Lord God, that I will come back to the first love. Change my course of destruction to a course of deliverance and life in you, Jesus. Let me read this to you, Hebrews 6, verse 19 and 20. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul. Amen? It is firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain. Who is that? It is Jesus. He has entered there on our behalf as a forerunner. Because he has become a high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Amen? Church, he is our anchor of our soul. He is the anchor of your life. He wants to be the anchor of your peace. He wants to be the anchor of your longing and uncomfortableness today, of your laziness, whatever it may be, so that you will call on him on the day of your difficulty so that he will deliver you. Do that today, church. Be serious with him today. Commit to Jesus today seriously. And be ready for the day of the Lord when he returns so that there would be no doubt in your life. God loves you, church. God longs for you. And he wants a true relationship with you today. Amen? Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We love you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for guiding us through every single period, every comma, every letter. Thank you for letting it be effective to us, Lord. That, Father, we want to long for you today. Forgive us for longing for the things and wanting for the things that are empty, Lord. Forgive us for uh, longing for the things that have uh, not bring satisfaction to us and it's been a heartbreak for us. Father, today we want to commit to you, Lord, and long for the things of you so that you would give us life once again. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor in your name, Jesus. As we continue to pray, church, if you're here listening, 
God is speaking to you and working on you today. You sense the Holy Spirit tugging on your heart. You feel a conviction on your heart. Not a condemnation, but a conviction to make things right today. And Jesus is not your Lord and you don't have a commitment with him. And you want to make a commitment with him. If that's you today, the Bible says to call on him. Confess with your mouth. Believe with your heart. That he is the son of God. He died for your sins. Hallelujah. And that you call out his name. The Bible says in Romans 10 that you will be saved. John chapter 3 tells us that we must be born again. And this is the rebirth that he wants us is to renew our lives in him. A renewal of our heart, of our thinking, of our speech, of our lifestyle. And you are sick of the old life and you want to make things new and be reborn in Christ. That's you, please, I ask. Would you simply repeat these words with me and say, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. I've heard your word today, and I want to make things right. Be my Lord, be my Savior. I believe that you are the Son of God. You died for my sin. You rose from the dead, and you are coming back again, and I want to be ready. I want to be ready for the day of the Lord. Jesus, have your way in me so that I would glorify you. And it's in your name, Jesus, I pray that we all sin. Amen. 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 Can we give God a hand of prayer? Praise today. If you said that prayer, you're online or you're in the house, come forward. Please comment below. We'd love to to walk alongside with you, give you resources to grow, get you plugged in to a Bible study and fellowship. If there's a prayer request, let us know as well. We'd love to pray for you as we're praying for our country. But not only that, we're praying for the world. And we're praying for God's perfect will to be done. Amen. Let's close our service today as we stand and sing it. Uh, we're going to make room for Jesus this morning. Amen. Let us stand. We're so thankful for the word. Thank you, Lord. We can come back. We can come back to those promises in our heart that we made with the Lord. The times when you've answered our prayer, Father, and we've come back to our folly. Father, forgive us. We're so grateful for you, Lord. Not your condemnation, Lord, but we know that you're bringing us back to you.
righteousness and a longing for peace and joy and comfort in you. Lord, bless your people today. May we go with your presence, Lord God. Never leave us, but fill us, Lord God. And we're careful to give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' wonderful name and all of God's people said, amen. amen. Can we give God a hand of praise today? Amen. Amen. God bless your church. Greet one another. Thank you for worshiping with us today. And we look forward to seeing you again. God bless you. It's so unusual, it's frightening. You see right through the best inside me. And you call me out to pull me in. You tell me I can start again And I don't need to keep on hiding I fully know